Today is Thursday, April 23rd, and it is... National Picnic Day. One birthday that's very special to me. John Oliver's birthday. John Oliver, happy birthday, John Oliver. Hi, Alexandria, this is Michael, and today we're making pancakes. Welcome to the full measure. I didn't even have to. Oh, I like that you did the cool, like... <laughs> Mary Kate and Ashley. <laughs> Am I Mary Kate or Ashley? You're Ashley. I'm Mary Kate. I don't know anything about Mary Kate and Ashley, but why do I feel like that's a put down? No, Mary Kate was always just like the sporty one, and that's who I wanted to be. And you think out of both of us that you're the sporty one? In 1998, I was. So on our show, we like to make a recipe a couple of different ways. We'll do it one way that's somewhat simple and the way that probably most people make at home and then we'll make it another way that's a little more involved, a little more complicated. We're not really seeing which recipe's better. We're trying to see if going the full measure is worth the extra effort. The simple way we'll be making pancakes is out of this box, a box of pancake mix. I haven't used a box of pancake mix in years. Have you ever made pancakes out of a box like this? Um, to be totally honest, until I was like an adult, I didn't know that you could just make pancakes without. Oh, you thought it like had to come out of the box? Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Interesting. I have a feeling, I haven't had a box of pancake mix in a very long time, but yeah. I actually think that these are gonna be pretty good. Better than I would have initially guessed. Should we get started? Should we have some box pancake mix? Yeah. Let's do it. Let's do it. We start by gathering our very short list of requisite ingredients. This part is great, less prep, less cleanup. The preparation method, also simple. Put everything in the bowl and mix. Start with your milk and then add both eggs. Something I would amend from the instructions printed on the box is to whisk your egg into your milk before pouring into the dry ingredients. With pancakes, you wanna mix as little as possible, even leaving a few clumps of dry mix. This builds less gluten and makes for fluffier pancakes. Without mixing your eggs into your milk, you're gonna have to stir more. Preheat your cooking surface. I'm using a nonstick pan, a staple in most kitchens, but a griddle would work too. Use a bit of nonstick spray in the pan, as little as possible, and pour your batter directly into the center of the pan. Let this sit undisturbed until bubbles are forming and the edges of the batter begin to appear dry. The first pancake is always the trickiest until you get the heat just right. Flip to the other side and cook for another one to two minutes. You can peek at the bottom and pull them when they're golden brown. Gotta make an attempt to give these pancakes a flip. Here we go. And success. Thank you, thank you. The thing about doing this in a video is I don't have to show you all of the times that it didn't work, which was most of the time. Or I can show you so you can laugh at me or with me, whichever you prefer. Typically I can get these pretty well, but I think the batter was just getting stuck on the pan. One even did nearly a flip and a half. Let's take a look at that in slow motion. Flipping pancakes is cool if you're a dad in a sitcom in the 90s. If your goal is to not ruin valuable pancake batter, then just flip them like a normal person with a spatula. Stack these on a plate and serve immediately or hold in your oven at the lowest temperature. I'm very impressed with the box mix. I suspect it's because there are a few chemical leaveners and it's mostly just flour. These look really great and I'm really happy with the result. Let's see how they taste. Okay, uh, you have to eat that whole stack of pancakes. Okay. <laughs> First of all, they're super fluffy. They're like very, very fluffy. That's a good fluffy pancake. That's really good. I mean, I have no complaints. I mean, it, it's not very complex. It's pretty simple, but it's a pancake. So like, who cares? Those are, they're super fluffy and they're very light. The texture's really good. I mean, it, I have no feedback. It's a good, it's like a very platonic idea of a pancake. Yep, they, uh, this tastes they like, this tastes like what the pancake emo emoji looks like. <laughs> Like why change anything? Like why do anything different when these out of the box are already so good? Making them a little bit better is not that much more effort. Let's make some pancakes from scratch. These are all the ingredients you'll need to make the best pancakes you've ever made. Trust me on this. The real hero is that lemon and I'll tell you why. You start by zesting the whole lemon into the milk. Make sure you only get the yellow part and not down to the white, that part can be bitter. Then juice the entire lemon, should be about two tablespoons. Pour the juice into the milk and stir. This seems odd, I totally understand. We're not making Kevin Malone's chunky lemon milk. It will look gross, but just move past it. 
What we are doing is encouraging the production of casein. This is similar to the outcome of recipes calling to mix vinegar into your milk, but with the lemons, we're also adding more flavor. The pancakes don't necessarily come out lemon flavored, but it does add some nice acidity, which balances the very sweet taste of pancakes with syrup. Science lesson over. Phew. Set this mixture aside and let it stand for 10 minutes. While waiting, sift together your three quarters of a cup of flour, two tablespoons of sugar, one teaspoon of baking powder, half a teaspoon of baking soda, and teaspoon of kosher salt into a medium bowl. This helps better integrate all the dry ingredients and also cuts down on that mixing time we talked about earlier. Sifted flour incorporates into wet ingredients much more quickly, which equals less stirring. After your milk has been sitting for 10 minutes, add your melted butter and your egg. Whisk well with the fork to fully incorporate the egg. In a somewhat counterintuitive move, I'll be adding my dry into my wet ingredients, which is usually the opposite of what you want to do for pancakes. If you do it in batches and mix very carefully, it should be fine. This is mostly laziness on my part because I want the batter to end up in the large measuring cup when I'm done. I'll show you why right after we talk about what pan we're going to be cooking in. Normally, a nonstick is perfectly fine, and you still get great pancakes using one. But in a real full measure effort, I'm going to use my customized 10 inch griddle pan. This is a large cast iron pan that I smoothed out with an angle grinder, a bunch of sandpaper, and some elbow grease. I feel like Brad Leone would definitely endorse this type of power tool related cooking. Normally lodge pans come with a rough cast, which you can see here. Smoothing it out gives it a perfectly flat surface, which is perfect for pancakes. If you're interested in seeing how this is done, leave a comment below and I'll make a video in the future about how I did this. This pan is well seasoned as all cast iron should be, but we still start with a small amount of nonstick spray. I actually prefer this over butter because butter tends to fry the batter. Speaking of, back to our batter. The reason I wanted the batter in the measuring cup is that mine has a little lip allowing me to pour the batter exactly where I want it. It also saves me from having to clean up an extra utensil. The process is similar from this point forward. Wait until you see bubbles and the edge beginning to appear just a little dry and flip. No showboating needed. Here are a few pancakes that turned out a little blonde. Making pancakes is a great way to learn your stove and your pans and how to delicately control heat. These blonde ones could still be saved by just flipping them back over and letting them brown up a little bit more. All in all, these pancakes turned out really, really good. And I'm excited to have Alexandria try them. She's had these a million times because they're a staple in our house, but rarely do we eat them at 2 p.m. on a Tuesday. So here we go. But we're gonna use um, real maple syrup rather than just like pancake syrup. Does it taste lemony though? No. It's just like br like bright. It's bright. Yeah. It's like a really, especially with something that you're putting like sugar on, it brings out like a brightness and a, more of a flavor. I was gonna like make that point, but like <laughs> you did it on your own. You're so food smart, you're a food genius. I've had these pancakes so many times, I know what's up. <laughs> these don't taste like lemon pancakes. No. They just taste like really layer. There's like there's there's flavor that more than just like sugar. Yeah, and it doesn't leave like a an artificial aftertaste or anything like you might get with some other I feel like baked goods that uh, have like a oh like a lemon a citrus, flavor. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't have that like. It's just quick there with the like bite that you're having and then that's kind of it and you just keep going and it's really balanced. I bet if you told someone like, hey, I have some lemon pancakes, do you want to try them? They probably would be like, yeah, I don't know, not really my thing. But if you just put them in front of the person and said, try these pancakes, they would be like, oh my God, these taste so good. And I bet- you Tricked them? These have, the pancakes have sugar in them. The syrup is mostly sugar. Mm -hmm. That when you're trying to work on a recipe like that, the best thing to do is add a little bit of acid because the acid balances the, yeah. the sweetness. But it would be described as bright, so like you were spot on. These pancakes are definitely, definitely worth your time. They're not that much, it's marginally more time than out of a box. I think the bigger thing that I took away from this is like, these box pancakes are pretty good. Yeah, like, like why not just have this on hand and yeah. then church it up with all that stuff. Church it up, I think that's a good conclusion is that you could just church up your pancakes with a little bit of lemon juice and some lemon zest and uh, you'd be- You're well on your way. You'd be a breakfast champion, for sure. This is our chart of worth it -ness. It measures how much effort you put into a recipe versus how much payoff you get. The box mix of pancakes were very simple and they were honestly pretty good. The from scratch pancakes were quite a bit better, but didn't really require too much more work. 
The biggest lesson here is that both pancakes were pretty great. Either way, both recipes are very simple and could be customized to whatever you'd like. You could add blueberries or chocolate chips, maybe some vanilla extract into the batter. That's what's great about pancakes is they let you be very creative, even if you're just starting with a box mix. Let us know in the comments below how you church your pancakes up and what you do to add a little bit of fun to your pancake recipe. Leave a comment below if you have a recipe or a dish that you'd like us to try on the show. Uh, we'll definitely read those comments and give it a shot. Thank you again for watching. If you don't mind hitting that like, the thumbs up for us. <laughs> Hit the thumbs up for us. Uh, click subscribe if you're interested in seeing more of these videos. And thank you. Cut it. That's for my dad. Hi, dad. He was born in 1977. Who? John Oliver. Yeah, why? That's, he doesn't seem that young. <laughs> <laughs> what? Say, say what you mean more plainly. He doesn't seem that young. Which means he seems... Old. <laughs> John Oliver does. Do you mean he just seems responsible? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was like at least 50. You thought John Oliver was 50? Yeah. Oh, He's no. like... <laughs> I'm so sorry, John. I watch your show every week. I'm a huge fan. I'm sorry for how offensive my girlfriend is being right now. I can't estimate things anyway. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> okay.